Hello, this video is going to be all about the internet, so what it is and also how it's connected. We're going to go through a few different ways the internet can connect up and also some of the characteristics of the networks involved in the internet because really the internet is just a network of networks. So a network of interconnected networks which crucially is worldwide. The internet is across the entire globe, it's a global network, but a network itself is just a group of devices that can communicate with each other and so that's what the internet is. The internet is a network but it's a network which contains lots of other networks. Right In your home you might have a Wi-Fi network which just consists of a few computers in your house but that is part probably of the internet as well. So it's a network of networks which is worldwide. Interconnected just means these networks are connected up together and the internet specifically is running a, a set of protocols called the Internet Protocol Suite, often shortened to TCP slash IP. To be part of the internet, you've got to connect up to it, but also be running the same software as other internet devices. And that software is a set of protocols called TCP IP. So the internet can have certain properties or certainly your connection to the internet can have certain properties. And these properties apply to any network. So bear that in mind, these words we could apply to any network. So things like latency, range, strength, bandwidth, and contention are keywords which relate to the performance of a network and relate to the performance of a network connection to the internet. So let's go through these one by one. This is not a complete list. There are other words you could use, but these are the five I think you need to know. So latency of a network refers to how long it takes to get a message. So low latency is good. If you have low latency, it means there is less delay in getting a response back. High latency means network networks seem slow. The range of a network refers to how far away you can be to still use the network reliably. A bigger range means you can be further away and still use the network. Now, you'll know that as you get further away from, say, a Wi-Fi router, it starts to become less reliable. You start to be able to use it less easily. It becomes slower and so on. Bigger range is a good thing, generally speaking, although there's a slight security risk if it's too big. The strength of a network definitely connects up to range. This is how consistent the network is. If you have low strength, it means it might work occasionally, but you might get lots of errors, it might be really slow. And so, of course, that's linked to range. The further away you are, and if you are close to the range of your network, it might be quite a weak signal. The bandwidth is how much data can be transferred across the network at once. So how much in total can you fit down uh, this network or across this network? High bandwidth is a good thing. Now latency and bandwidth are kind of separate things, but both definitely relate to the speed of a network. Right? If you've got high bandwidth, it means you can transfer data quicker, but it might still have high latency if it is a poor performing connection, say. And finally, contention. You might have heard in normal life the word contentious. If a decision is contentious, it means people are arguing about it and it's quite, people are fighting over it. Now, contention in a network is similar. It's really how many devices can use the network at once. So really, can the devices fight over the network? Is that possible? Can it deal with multiple devices at once? And can it deal with it without having errors? It's possible you have a network which has, say, 10 devices connected to it, but all of them, you know, can't communicate at once. You can have lots of errors because they interfere with each other and collide. So contention is about how well it can perform with many devices. Although some networks are uncontended, if a network is uncontended, it means it's only got one user. This might be something like a leased line where a company pays to have just a uncontended network which only they use. Let's now apply some of these words to some different ways to connect to the internet, starting with some wired methods. So copper is really, really common. It's used in ethernet cables. This is an ethernet cable in the top right. Copper is used because it's cheap and copper transmits electricity really well. So copper cables use electricity to send the binary messages up and down these cables. A alternative which is used more and more nowadays is optical fiber. So if optical fiber, also called fiber optic, these use light, not electricity. So instead of having actual electricity going through the cables, they have pulses of light, which translate to the binary codes. Now, optical fiber 
in terms of its evaluation, generally has much higher bandwidth, meaning it can send more data at once. It's got lower latency because you can't get faster than light. Light is your fastest way to communicate data. Electricity is fast too, but not nearly as fast as light. But also it's got greater range. So generally, these can have can be much longer and will be absolutely fine. They're not perfect. They can break quite easily because usually this is glass or quite brittle plastic. They can snap, but don't always go through tight bends as easily. And also very expensive. Moving then on to some wireless methods. Well, if you have mobile data, you are connecting to the internet via a cellular network. So 4G and 5G are examples of services provided by a mobile data network. So a cellular network, in other words. Now these are separate from things like Wi-Fi, they're a different network, but they provide access to the internet. And the strength of this really depends on where you are. Right, as you will know from experience, probably, as you move about, 4G strength, and especially 5G strength, if you have the latest phones, can vary quite a lot. For example, here is a map of 5G coverage as it stands near Bristol and a bit of Wales as well. You can see we've got 5G in some of the towns, but not elsewhere. So the strength of it will depend on where you are and how close you are to the nearest transmitter. And 5G, as you'll probably know, is better than 4G, right? Because it's got lower latency, it's quicker to respond, but also can have higher bandwidth. You can send more things at once using 5G. Both of those contribute to it being faster than 4G. But related to this coverage, 5G actually has a much lower range than 4G. 4G can spread out quite far, but 5G is very, as a signal, very weak. You've got to be really close to a 5G receiver. It's why the big phone companies have got to put down many, many more masts for 5G. You'll see them dotted about down high streets, for example, because 5G has got quite a low range, whereas 4G can spread out a lot more easily. Other wireless methods which are more likely to be used in your home are things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So Wi-Fi has got bigger range and a bigger bandwidth than Bluetooth. Bluetooth's really for connecting up devices right near you, like a wireless headphones or something like that. And both can also suffer issues with contention, especially if you're living in a busy flat block or if you are near a high street or if you've got loads of people living at home. You can have issues where devices interfere. If devices are on a similar frequency, to each other, it can mean you get errors and things slow down. That's where they're contending with a network but it's not dealing with it very well. That's not always the case, right? It's not always contentious, but it can be. Now, in terms of networks we don't really use very often ourselves, but do exist, satellite networks are where you've got a satellite floating around in space, which is providing wireless signals through radio waves back down on Earth. Because they are up in space, they have a big range. You can access them from a big geographical area, not the entire Earth, but a big chunk of the Earth can be serviced by one satellite. But because they're so far away, they've got really high latency, which is a bad thing. It takes a long time to get a response from a satellite. I mean, relatively speaking, it doesn't take hours, but it might take half a second, which is noticeable if you are, say, on a phone or something like that. So they're not used very often, but they're good if you need to be in a remote location. Another type of method, which is not used, as, again, as often, it does exist, are microwave networks. So these use the same technology as your microwave in your kitchen, but are different, obviously, because these are used for communication. These need to be line of sight, meaning to access a microwave network, you've got to be directly in front of it. You've got to have a clear path between you and the receiver. And so again, the strength really depends on where you are. If you are out of sight, if you are blocked by a mountain or not looking at it, it won't have good strength. But if you are right in front of it, in a direct path, it would have good strength. And a pro is they have got high bandwidth, despite this limitation where the range is really quite fixed.